Hello my stitchy friends! Welcome to Snickerdoodle Stitch. My name is Kathleen and this is a channel about cross stitch. So let me think. I have been up to a ton since I talked to you all last. I spent a week in Oregon. I flew out a week before our cruise and did all the touristy stuff. Went to the Columbia uh, River Gorge, went and saw Multnomah Falls. Did some downtown Portland. I drove out to the coast, to, to Cannon Beach. I had a fantastic time. And then the Stitchers started arriving on Wednesday. So uh, we all met up there at Embassy Suites. We had Shelia from Sunshine Stitchers, Candy, 614 Stitcher. Um, who else joined us there? Carolyn Sook from Seasook Stitch. Uh, Gwen, Deb from Sunshine Stitchers. Um, I'm afraid I'm forgetting, Margaret, Margaret, uh, I'm afraid I'm forgetting somebody, but I think that's everybody that was there at the hotel. And then the next day we went to Acorns and Threads. We spent the whole day there. It is a delightful shop. I had the best time there. I'm going to show some haul that I got when I was there. I didn't buy too much, but I of course did buy some stuff. They had a lot of samples from designers that I'm familiar with, but hadn't seen a lot of the samples stitched up. So uh, from Kesslin and Ink Circles, and I'm trying to think who else. They were or are designers who are from that general geographic area. And so they just had a ton of samples from them and that was so inspiring. And so I did buy some of those patterns and I'll show, show those. But we stitched there all day, and then the next day we hopped on the train from Portland to Seattle, and we stayed overnight in Seattle. Some other folks came and joined us there, and then we got on the cruise ship. Uh, the cruise to Alaska was fantastic. I'm so ready to go again. In fact, I said if I'm forced to retire early, which is a possibility, my company's being merged, um, if I'm forced to retire early, I want to go work in Juneau for a summer. They all think I'm joking, but I'm mostly serious. I absolutely loved Alaska. Had some amazing excursions, and thank you to friends like Maureen, who gave me tips on what they enjoyed when they went to Alaska. I did a photography-focused whale watch. Uh, so there was only 12 of us on the fairly small boat, and we did have a humpback whale. We saw lots, but... One in particular came out of the water about 15 feet from our boat, so it was right there. It was incredible. And uh, Gwen and I poked around Icy Strait Point, and that was actually, it was the stop that I was least looking forward to, and it was really interesting. So we had a good time there. It was beautiful weather. We had two days that were actually sunny, and that was one of them. And it was a good thing because that was not a, a location that you'd want to be at when it wasn't sunny. And um, and then in Ketchikan, I did a hike excursion to go see the bear, black bears in the wild. And that was absolutely incredible. So I had a fantastic time. Dealt with the red eye coming home. I came home Saturday night. So I got home Sunday morning. And then Monday morning, woke up not feeling great, not horrible, but felt like I had a head cold, thought maybe it was just Delaware allergies back. Um, turned out it was COVID. So I didn't do a lot of stitching after I got home because I was mostly just making it through the work day and then vegging. But I'm completely back to normal now and actually planning the next trip because I leave on Wednesday for Stitching in the Wild in Montgomery, Alabama. So I'll be there for the long weekend. Then I'm home for a week. And then I found out when I got back from my two week Oregon, Alaska vacation that I've got to go to Phoenix back to back weeks for work. So I finagled. So I'm going to stay over the weekend in between the work uh, business stuff. And I'm going to hit up the attic. So I'll get to check out their shop. From what it looks like and everything that I've heard and the other stitchers and floss tubers that I know that love it there, it's going to mostly be samplers, which anybody who's watched me knows I, I, I'm not opposed to samplers. It's not what I typically stitch. 
um, but still looking forward to checking out their shop and I'm sure they'll have fabric and floss and lots of other goodies anyway. And then I'm going to head up to Sedona and Green Canyon. So that's only a few hours, four hours north of uh, Phoenix. And so with a long weekend, I'm going to do that and then resume work. And then I'll be back home. Um, and then it's a week and I leave for Stitch New England. So the next like almost two months are going to be a little crazed. But I'm really looking forward to it. It's a lot of trips that I have looked forward to all year. Um, had to cancel, of course, some of my plans for spring, so I'm excited about these. But I think that's all the recaps that I have of what's been going on. So I'm gonna dive into some stitching. I actually have a finish. Um, funny thing, I got this floss in the um, in an order from, I don't know, somewhere, one, two, three stitch probably. And I looked at it and I thought, I don't remember what this floss is for, but I'm pretty sure I, it's all for one project. And then I looked at the colors and I thought, yeah, that's, that's hands-on design. And then I remember what it was for. It was for Botanical B, which was one of the patterns that came out at market this year that I've really been wanting to do. And I stitched it and finished it. So I've got an FFO. Um, it wasn't what I had planned to FFO it on, but I'm quite happy with it. So let me hold it up really close so you can see it. it all right, it's not going to want to focus unless I cover my face. It is stitched on some hand-dyed fabric. It was from part of my fabric experimentation a couple months ago and it is all stitched in the called for over dyes except the black on the B is actually black. It called for uh, graphite I think. Um, one that's kind of a black and gray mix and I wanted it to really pop and so I did stitch the body of the B and the legs and stuff in true black. And then what it's finished on this was from Hobby Lobby um back in their summer stuff and it said something about squeezing lemons so there was some writing on there but this covered it perfectly i had originally planned on finishing this as a circle and i actually had a white enamel pedestal candle holder that i was gonna finish it in but one i'm not sure what i did with that candle holder i can picture it it's here somewhere and I had a thought the other day about where it might be because I bought it when I went to a scrapbook convention. I didn't buy it at the scrapbook convention, but I bought it on that trip. And I think it may be in a bag of stuff with things I bought at the scrapbook convention. But anyway, pretty sure that was going to be too big, too big around. It was one of the reasons I bought that thing was that it was bigger around. And this actually came out pretty small. It's on, I think, 18 count. Um, yeah, I did just use one thread, so it's got to be 18 or 20 count. Um, so I was digging around for what I wanted to finish it on and spotted this, and the colors are perfect. It's sort of hard to see, but there is the same color gold flowers, and there's some down, down in the flower here, but it's not showing up really well. Um same yellow as the paddle so i didn't have to do anything to this wooden um hobby lobby thing which i paid like a dollar fifty or something for it. so perfect the bow was already on there all i had to do was cut the piece of cardboard i cut a rectangle and then i rounded off the top um and I actually kind of like that because there is a straight line at the bottom here, a stitched line, which does give it a square bottom, but then the round top. But on the pattern, they do have it finished as a round. And it's really cute that way too. Um, and I wanted a bright blue like they had, so my bee is done. I'm quite excited with it. It's nice, um, kind of different it's different colors for me but I do like the brightness of it and then on my trip 
I have a finish. It's not FFO'd, but this is Fair Isle Friends from Tiny Modernist is the pattern. And I stitched this little penguin over here. I definitely want to do the polar bear, and I'm not entirely sure about the other two. I may do the panda bear as well, but the penguin and the polar bear I definitely wanted, and I finished the penguin. Let me hold it up here on the pattern because the light, oh, that's not gonna work. One moment, please. Get something white to hold it up again. So, here's my little penguin all done. It is on 18 count perforated paper. So I used one strand of floss and actually I'm kind of happy with the way he looks. He was a bit of a disaster. Um, the white I was stitching, I was stitching the sweater. I had all the turquoise done and I was stitching the white on his face on the ship. And I did get sick on the ship, not COVID. It was like a gastrointestinal thing that I had for a day at the end. So I missed, I was really bummed because it was our very last day and it was really a full day at sea. We left Ketchikan at one o'clock. I wasn't feeling great that afternoon. I kept feeling like I needed a nap. By dinner time, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> um, and then we weren't docking again until eight o'clock the following evening in Victoria, Canada. So it was the full, full day for stitching. And I stitched on this some the afternoon when I first started not feeling well and Later, I was like, these stitches are a disaster, but, but it actually came out okay. Um, so I was bummed. I missed, I missed my full stitching day. And then flying home, I didn't really get any stitching done because I was a red eye. So I was sleeping on the flight. But anyway, really happy with this little penguin. I want to get the polar bear done decide if I'm going to do either of the other two and then I'll go ahead and finish these up. And yes, I know he's smooshed up there in the corner. I don't know what I was thinking. I cut the, I cut these pieces of perforated paper in little squares before I left so that they were ready to grab and do this. Um, and then I stuck him way up in the corner, but that's fine. He's going to get cut out anyway. Uh, so it's all good. All right. This I was just stitching on last night. So I took this with me back at um, Stitch New Jersey. EJ from Sunshine Stitchers and Candy at 614 Stitch or convinced me to join EJ's Bake Me a Dozen Sal, which is the Rosewood Manor One Dozen Quakers. This is the pattern. And last night we had a zoom meeting where people stitched on it now they started this back in december so it finishes this december they broke it into i think 12 sections and then december's the catch-up month so lots of them are finishing it already um i've got a lot to do to catch up but i'm determined to catch up by well i'm determined to finish it by the end of this year so last night when we zoomed i did get some more stitched on it and I did take it with me to um, Oregon and I stitched on it there. Um, it's going pretty fast. These small motifs in here, like these two little ones, this one over here, up here, anything that's small in there is actually one over one. So it's a bit more stitching than what it looks like. And last night we picked out, um, I think next year we might all do modern folk embroidery, put a bird on it, which is another Quaker. Um, the size is bigger, but I honestly don't think it's any more stitching because like none of the Quakers are as dense as this one. And there isn't this one over one stuff scattered all over the place in it and those take up some time but I'm really happy with the way this is coming out so far it's on my teal blue fabric I was limited in what I could could choose for fabric and floss since I decided to start it at Stitch New Jersey and I just raided um, Jim's shop with what he had there in floss and he had some silks in this color and the border I bought there 
and he had this fabric and I love this is blue lagoon lagoon blue maybe just lagoon it's 28 count Zweigart um I wish they had this in 32 and 36 I have only seen it in 28 anywhere I tried googling it I still only see it in 28 I asked Jim and Allison about it was it older and they said no it was new so I'm not sure I'm gonna keep an eye out because I would love to have it like it's almost the same color as my sweatshirt um I would love to have it in a higher count but anyway the the these in the pale gray are all the one over one if I can go the right direction and then everything else has been in a different color so far um I just grabbed a bunch of teal looking silks, except, sorry, the color is going to blow out, but you can see the stitching better. Um, I just grabbed things in cool tones that would work on here. So I'm really happy with this so far. And this you will see again on next video. I've got to keep working on it so I can catch up. There's really just... Like, I've done this big motif, and I've done this big motif. This one is up next. And then it's really just into some smaller things. So, I can get it. I'll catch up. Um, I also took with me Starstruck, Carolyn Manning. And you got to check out Candy, 614 Stitcher's video. She was working on her Carolyn Manning, and it is so yummy. It just was the prettiest, bright colors. I loved it more in person than on the pattern, um, and she got a ton done. She really focused on it, and she got a lot done on her Carolyn Manning, but I worked on this. Mine is starstruck, and sorry, my pattern is getting a little rumpled here because this is a travel piece for me because I am doing it on oh, 16 count Ada, 18 count, 16 or 18 count. It's plain white Ada. Um, the whole thing is gonna be covered anyway. And since it's two strands on Ada, must be 16 count. Um, you can't see anything through. So Ada gives nice consistent blocky look. Um, here is where I am. There will be, see how there's like these bigger squares in here? Like if you think of them like quilt blocks, there will be five across and five down. So I'm about three fifths, but I've sort of been jumping around. So it's going to be hard to tell what I worked on it. I did a bunch of this green down here. And I filled in some light blue gray up here. That's actually a substitute color. It's not the called for. The called for is a pale purple. Um, I will put a picture in over here of where I was. I know I took a picture of this before I stitched on it. but really happy with this. I'm going to take it with me again um, on my trip to Phoenix because it just, with it, with it being on the Ada um, and I just use a hoop, I don't use the Q-snap or anything with it. I use one of the spring tension hoops. Um, it's very compact for travel and I can stitch a lot with one color which is really easy on an airplane, you know, where you're just, you don't want to have a whole bunch of stuff dragged out. So you'll be seeing that one again too when I get back from Phoenix. I probably won't stitch on it before then, but. All right, this next one was a start and it was Primrose Cottage Summer Quaker. I got this pattern right before I left. And I love these um, little Quakers. I think there's an autumn one coming out. And I don't know that I need more of them, but I am doing this on 25 count white Lugana. I think it's antique white. So it's got just a hint of creaminess in it, but 
Here it is. So I've got the top all done. Um, yeah, I started on this one in the hotel in Oregon. So I'm really happy with the way it's coming out. And then the companion piece, because I got summer, spring, winter, and Valentine's Day. So this was summer, and then spring is this one. And I am not doing it in purple. I picked my four flosses out because I thought I would just use all four of them in a bowl together year round. This is Classic Colorworks um, Watermelon Belle Soie is what I'm doing mine in instead of the purple. And I don't have my other colors with me. I think it's like Chester Blue and it's something that's more red, but oh, okay, that's much brighter looking on camera than what it really is. It's a little more subdued, not quite as neon looking. Um, I picked them out because I like the four colors together. And that was my original thinking was that I would use these four as smalls in a bowl together. I got a lot done on this one. This one, hold it up close. I love the little birds and the little birdhouses. Um... Yeah, this is the bottom corner. So I really just have this little chunk in here to do. And this one is done. Um, I love that watermelon. Watermelon is one of my favorites. It's a pink with just a hint of coral. I wouldn't call the floss coral but it leans that way and the variegation in it, you can see it in here, the sections that are lighter or darker. It, it just has a really nice subtle variegation. So that's my spring. Let's see, it'll go with summer. I got a lot more done on spring. I don't know why. I think I was having fun stitching with that pink. So I got those done. Well, I got those worked on when I was in uh, Oregon. On my flight out, I started my Mary Poppins. And this one is from Ovalinda, I think. It'll be in the notes below. I got it from her website but there is also you can get it on Etsy as well and it's this Mary Poppins sampler which is going to be a crack ton of stitching and it's going to be 13.23 inches on Hardanger that's what I'm stitching it on is Hardanger white Hardanger um I started in the upper corner I'm really wishing I had started in the middle uh, there was Holly who was with us on the cruise and Holly and I talked about it and I said, you know, I didn't really realize, I don't think how dense this border stitching is and how much time just that border is going to take. And I'm wishing I had started in the middle because then if I decided I was done with it, you could be done with just the middle and not do that entire border. But at the time, I really loved this because it reminded me of a long dog or a uh, even a modern folk embroidery with the density of the stitching. And I have wanted to do one of those two. Um, I have a modern folk embroidery kitted up that I need to start. Um, but I fell in love with this one. So it is what it is now. I am stitching it with Roxy Flosco Cousin It. I have a small hank of that from uh, when I went to Stitch North. And I stitched this the entire flight from 
Philly to Oregon. And it was the entire flight. I slept for maybe half an hour. Um, and it looks like I did not get very much done, but it was a nice chunk of stitching that I got done. That's why I, and I was like, oh, this is going to take a very, very, very long time. Um, I think the floss is even coming through on camera. It's a miracle. So Cousin It is a very dark green, almost black. And then there is uh, sections that are slightly lighter, um, more like the color of my sweatshirt. But it's a gorgeous variegation. And I remember at Stitch New England, they didn't, ha they didn't have hanks of everything, but they had small hanks of several different flosses there. And they said that they were their most popular colors. So Cousin It is very popular. And since I have a hank, it should be enough to do this whole thing, especially since I'm only using one strand on 22. And ignore this stuff up here. That was me, uh, let's see, that was testing red for the Modern Folk Embroidery, not for this piece. And then I tested using Sulky, that's some Sulky there. That was a little heavier than what I liked. It, it was kind of bulky. And then the, the test up there is this. I wish there was something sort of in between this thickness and sulky, but um, it'll be fine. So this will be another good travel piece. Um, you know, I might take it to Phoenix with me too. I, Hardanger, anything Ada or like Hardanger, which is 22 count, um, I'll call it 22 count Ada. It's not really, it's Hardanger, but you jump from 20 count Ada to, to Hardanger, which is 22 count. Um, I don't really need magnification and I can do it with just okay light. So this becomes a good uh, travel project, which is good because it's going to take me a millennia to get it finished. All right. Now this next one... Oh, this is my last one. This is a start. I bought this when I was at um, Acorns and Threads. I wanted to buy and kit up a project and this is what I chose. And I got this lovely project bag, which this is my, this is my normal size project bag. So you can see it's small. It's it's maybe nine by twelve. And my normal size that I make are thirteen by fourteen. Um so I got this project bag. I'm not gonna keep this project in here because it doesn't fit terribly well. It's a little bit too big for a full size uh pattern to fit in here. But um I wanted to I wanted to try out the size project bag to see if I wanted to make some more. And I wanted a project bag for me corns and threads. But the project that I bought and kitted up when I was there is Ink Circles and it's Sumatran lace and this is it. And this is not very big. So on 32 count, it's only eight and a half inch square. Um, yeah, so it, it's not a terribly big, big pattern. Um, and then I just searched there for fabric that I liked and some floss and I'm doing it in silk. And now I'm wondering if I bought one or two things of silk. Oh, I bought, oh, I bought four. Okay. I've got plenty of silks. I was looking at this thinking... Ooh, what, what soap did I buy? Because I may not have enough, but I've got plenty. Um, and it's all tangled up. It's caught on a key fob. So I'm stitching this in a thread gatherer silk and colors, and it's called Tapestry Green. Ah, and you're so shocked, right? It's the color of my sweatshirt. 
Um, and I am doing it on 28 count, no, 32 count Touch of Blue is the name of this. I don't know who it's from. It was just labeled Touch of Blue. And I got this little needle minder when I was there, acorns and threads. Um, this thread gatherer silk is a dream to work with. So there it is up close. So you can see it. And what I got done, it's this, it's the center medallion. And the touch of blue is, it's green with a hint, or it's blue. It's a greenish blue, not teal or aqua. It's definitely blue, but it leans more toward the green side than purple. Uh, and then a hint of gray in it. So it, it's a very subtle, um, it's a very subdued blue. <clears throat> and it's getting the green on there. So I'm not sure when this will get some more love because I've got a lot lined up here and I'm jonesing to start my, my, uh, Halloween and fall stitching. And I've got to catch up on one dozen Quakers. All right. Um, I, I'm going to show a few things that I got on the cruise. I've lost one bag that has some stuff in it. I haven't lost it. I just, I'm not sure where I put it. So Shelia gave us, and this was actually from the cross stitch cupboard, gave these. These needles, they're Pony brand. They're from India. And I heard someone last night refer to them as the black hit, the black eyed needles. So the black eye is actually 24 and blue is 26 and pink is uh 28 so they they've colored the head of the needles so you would know what size needle you're grabbing and they're very nice to stitch with they almost feel lighter Shelly and i were talking about that like i like edmars because i think edmars feels smoother he said, "How? What, it's a needle. How smooth can it get? I'm not sure what that's all about. And these feel lighter. Um, they're very nice to stitch with. Somebody did say they stitch two, Candy stitches two-handed, and she doesn't flip the needle so that it's always the, um, when she comes back up through, she, com she comes through with the eye uh, on top. So down with the pointy part and then up with the eye. So the needle stays in the same position as she stitches with two hands. And she thought that these needles shredded her floss more than normal. Although she does say stitching two handed the way she does, she thinks shreds the floss more. But I don't stitch two handed and um, I am stitching one dozen Quakers with this because I was using one of these needles last night and it, and they're really nice. So I have a feeling they're maybe a little bit harder to find. Cross stitch covered has them. Um, I did Google it and it looked like at one time that quarter shop may have had them, but they're showing out of stock. So I don't know if that meant they tried them. They won't be getting them again or I, I don't know but Pony is the brand. Um, Shilia also gave us this, and I have been stitching for 45 years and had never heard this tip before, and it really does work. So in this little container, she just cut a piece of, you know, cellulose sponge and dampened it and 
much like you would use thread conditioner, just zip your thread over it. It takes all of the kinks out of the thread. It smooths the thread down a tiny bit, which sometimes I wouldn't want it to do that. Sometimes I want the thread puppy so that it covers the fabric better, but um, it's less likely to knot that way. You know, as you're pulling through, it doesn't get like the little knots on the back and stuff. Um, so it gets all the kinks out and it's really nice. Like I was stitching with dinky dies on the one dozen Quakers and dinky dies because of the way they twist them just to package them for, to sell them. They're very kinky and just zipping it over the damp sponge. All the kinks are gone. Um, yeah, this is genius. She said she learned it years ago at like a cross stitch 101 when she went to a cross stitch festival and uh, I had never heard it before, but it really does work. Um, Sean gave us little, um, you know, needle book work, work holders. There's a little pocket you could put scissors and stuff. She's got a 24 uh, size 24 needle in there. There was an embroidery floss. Um, on the cruise, we had um, we had a reservation for five o'clock for dinner in the main dining room every night. And people, you know, different people were there every night because people had nights where they could do the specialty dining and things like that, or just excursions or other plans with friends, family, not everybody was traveling solo. And then at seven o'clock every night from like seven to 10, we had a dedicated little room for us to go in and stitch. Now there wasn't any windows in it, but it was nighttime anyway, so you can't see anything. There's nothing to see at night in Alaska. It's cloudy, so you don't have moonlight and you, it's not like you're seeing city lights or something, you're out in the middle of Alaska. Um, the cool thing, the little room was right behind one of the big stages where they did evening entertainment. So we could hear all the shows and everything. We had a good time in there. I don't remember why I was talking about that. And then Karen gave us some stickers and she had made everybody an ornament. So this was my little Christmas tree ornament on perforated paper that is solidly stitched. It's so sweet. I love it. Um, I think that's everything I have right here. Oh, Shelia and Margaret had given us all um, needle minders that say Stitching Alaska 2024. The funny thing is I made everybody needle minders. I found a picture of our ship in Alaska. So it actually was the Norwegian Bliss. And I shrunk the picture down and I made needle minders that were very similar. Um, I don't have the thing here that I gave everybody. And the needle minder was just one thing in a tin. I gave everybody a tin that had a couple needles, a couple of those little um, curly Q bobbin holders that you can use to hold fabric out of your way, um, a thread grabber, for those little tiny um, neon colored scissors. Basically a bunch of things that if somebody got there and realized they forgot something, they would have it. Um, oh, and then one of Sunshine Stitcher's viewers made this pattern for us. Um, it is from Rumen Stitches. And I need to look, I think I asked Shilia if she has like an Etsy shop or something. And she didn't think so. I would really need to, uh, I really need to find out because look how sweet this is. And it's got all things Alaska. You've got the bear, you've got the eagle, we've got an otter. Um, this was the ship. You got the whale tail. You got the glacier. I mean, she like nailed everything that we were going to see there in this little pattern. So I need to stitch this and I need to look up 
and see if I can find room and stitches anywhere to thank her for making that for us. Um, all right, I am up to Paul. But first, one of the hauls that I got was this Alaska fabric. I got this one. And I got this Alaska fabric. And since I got back, I've made, oh, and I had a keychain with these little Alaska, um, this one actually says Alaska, and these have like a moose and a bear, and didn't see a moose, did see lots of bear. Oh, and a wolf. Okay, I didn't see a wolf either. Um, but I got back and made a couple project bags. I bought this fabric in Sitka, so that will be a nice souvenir in memory. Not sure what I'm going to put in those. Um, because I don't have an Alaska project. Well, except this, but this will be a fast stitch. Um, I might just use them for winter stitching. Um, or if I have something fish related, I don't know, maybe winter, even though there wasn't a lot of snow. It was on the mountain caps and stuff. Um, and I wasn't there in the winter, but Alaska makes me think cold in winter. <clears throat> and then I bought this fabric when I was in Oregon and it's not Oregon specific, but there's a lot of berries in Oregon. I do have to say the cherries in Oregon and Washington are killer. They just have the best cherries. But New Jersey has better blueberries. And then there was something else, maisonberries? I think there were maisonberries. It, it started with an M. Um, and I had to try those. And they were sort of like blackberries. But I had never had those before, so that was fun. But anyway, berries. There were a lot of fresh berries. Lots of signs to come pick berries. And so I bought this fabric at Craft Warehouse, which is a chain there that I wish we had here. Um, they had amazing stamp supplies. Um, they had some decorative stuff, mostly just seasonal, not overkill like Hobby Lobby. They were smaller than Hobby Lobby, but it was mostly truly was craft stuff. But they have really nice fabric selection too. Um, and then I have an Oregon keychain on here. So I got this made. And then these two have nothing to do with my trip or three, but I made a few more project bags. I got this Pez keychain when I was in Connecticut last year on my way back from Stitch New England. And I wanted candy fabric that wasn't chocolate candy to make a project bag to hang this on. And when I was at the quilt convention or show this last spring, my friend Lana spotted these dots and then we found the Mike and Ike's. And I was like, that's the retro candy I'm looking for. So that's my retro candy pouch. Not sure what project's gonna go in there. And then I needed fall and Halloween. Um, you guys saw all my stash. And I already had more kitted up than I had project bags. Like as I was showing you all, I think I had six projects in one bag. So I got this one done for fall. This is the one, I thought these were little mice. These are really just faces on the acorns, I, I'm now thinking. But it's got little pilgrim stuff on the back. Um, but I got this fall one done. And then... I got this Halloween one done. Um, these weren't even the four squares that I had planned on using, but it's fine. I wanted the cat, but then, I don't know. I, I just, these were in a corner. So I just went ahead and used these four. And this, this is part of the same it's part of the same line as this. I don't know who the line is, but I like all these little haunted houses. So I made a, I made this whole stack of 
project bags. Um, all right, now I truly am into stash, not things that I've made. I went to some quilt shops when I was in Oregon, um, and just across the river in Vancouver, Washington. There were some nice little quilt shops there, but one thing I bought was a bunch of white buttons. She had this huge box of like antique buttons and I did pull out what I bought these to go with. I've got this um, Rosewood Manor Barnwood buttons. And somebody told me the button pack for this, if you can find it, is like $35 or something like that. I'm not paying $35 for some white buttons. Um, I have a lot of the smaller size, what I'll call antique buttons, because I can read my mom's old button box, which is actually an old margarine tub, but it's got a lot of that size because a lot of the buttons that ended up in there were buttons that my grandmother or my mom cut off my grandfather or my dad's shirts. And the shirts went in the rag bin to use for cleaning and stuff, but the buttons all got cut off and thrown in these margarine tubs. And so I know I can find the smaller white ones, but I was excited. I dug through, what did I just do with those? Oh, I dug through her buttons in this big box to find, um, you know, there's some cool big sized ones and I didn't have, and my mom's stash didn't have big ones, but, um, like, you know, that's really, that really does look like a flower. This one almost looks like a sunflower star. They just, they weren't plain round buttons. There were a lot of buttons there that had a lot of depth and design to them. So, like this one. So, um, they may need to be cleaned up a little bit, but, uh, they're going to work. I, I didn't stitch on this. I just got this out so that I could <clears throat> show what I bought the buttons for. So it's still, this is where it was last time you saw it. I need to see if I can find some square buttons because they, it is, uh, they do have a square button here and in one other place, but. A round button would look fine in there. Now that I have some bigger ones. So I got those buttons. And then now I'm into pattern haul. All right, so huh, I did buy a few more than I was thinking I had in my head. Okay. Um, they had this one stitched up. It's Bent Creek, Bent Creek Educated. And that uh, one is just too cute. You know, I love my cats. Although I'll probably stitch him orange because I like the orange boys. And I love books. So that's just a little stitch. And then they had this one stitched up. I'm a sucker for models. This will do me in every time. This is Madame Chantilly Halloween Town. And look at all those little witches flying above the town. I just love that one. This would be... Okay, so in my head, I'm thinking this would be a quick stitch. It's the same thing I did with... It's still sitting here. My boardwalk stitch, which did not turn out to be quick because all of these things are solid, all these houses are solid. So it's a lot of stitches in those little buggers. It's not a long stitch, don't get me wrong, but it's not a whip it out in a couple nights either. And now that I'm looking at this, it's the same concept. But that's okay, I had fun stitching that one. Might even fit in the same frame. Hmm. Well. Um, and then I mentioned that she had a lot of Kesslins there. And Kesslin, who is Linda Kesky, is the designer. 
um, is local. Yep, Vancouver, Washington. So right across the river from Portland. So she had tons of models done with Kesslin. And like I said, I'm a sucker for the models. So this one is called Simply Friends. And it came with the little charm up there as well. And that one you could do in lots of different, I mean, it's a single color. Um, and there's lots of things you could, lots of different colors, fabrics and thread colors you could do. It's only 66 by 62. So they did it on 40 count and that made it just over three by three. So this is a little guy. This next one, when the shoe fits, is also Kesslin's. When the shoe fits, buy the hat. It was really cute. I may have to stitch that one for my aunt. All right, this one I had not picked up. This one I got peer pressured into buying. Carolyn and Candy were both buying this one. And it's called My Creation. And this picture does not at all do it justice. And what you can't tell looking at the picture is that a lot of it is beads. So... I'm looking to see if it says, uh, I'm looking to see how many different colors of beads are in this bad boy. Uh, all right, I don't see a full list. It's broken out by block, but there's lots you could do with this one. You could do it monochromatic. You could do it like this. They've used Gloriana painter's thread and Caron water lilies and then Mill Hill beads which with this many colors that would all cost a fortune but I could just read I mean this is not very big it's 103 by 103 so each of these squares is only like 25 by 25 um you could easily just pull threads from stash you know, a couple threads is all it would take to do a single color in one of the little blocks. But I'll have to see when anybody else is starting that one. And then I really got sucked into the ink circles. I have want, been wanting some ink circles, but um, most of the shops that I shop at locally that have ink circles patterns have the newer ones, which are gorgeous, but they usually have some creature in them that I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to stitch that. I don't want, um, I don't know, griffin or elk or some creatures that I'm just like, eh, I don't know if I want that. They had a lot there that were just the geographic ones, like the one that I kitted up and started. And those were what I got sucked into. So Turrets in Town is one that I got. And this one on 32 count is only seven and a half by seven and a half. This is this is not big. Um in fact none of these were huge. This one is circular logic. This one Okay, on 28 count, this one's 11 by 11. And that's probably the count and size that they had there at the shop. They they had all of these as samples, I think. Maybe not this last one that I'm going to show, but... Um, this would be really pretty, even in monochromatic... They used two different Gloriamas, so variegated Gloriamas for this, but. I have a, and I've got like three or four skeins of it. It was a floss that was made just for Stitching in the Wild last spring. 
by, oh, I can picture the tag and I can't think of her name, but it could be nice to do this in. It's like turquoise blue and yellow. Anyway, <clears throat> this last ink circles one is the bramble and the rose. This one's bigger. So this one on 32 count is 15 by 15. So now we're getting heftier, but I just love the, uh, kind of the Celtic look of this one. And those could all be great travel pieces unless I did them on a high thread count because it is a lot of, uh, you know, it's not very many colors. This next one I fell in love with because of the colors. I I'm quite clear why I fell in love with this one. It's Jan Hooks Creates Carnival. It's very dense stitching and on 32 count it's 11, it's a little over 11 by 15. So it's not small, it's 185 by 245, but you can see there's a lot of stitching in there. But oh my God, I love those colors. So, let's see, they stitched it on 25 count Lugana. Oh. One over one on 25 count. Yeah. Oh yeah, she even mentions on the back, it would be nice on a dark colored fabric too. And not a lot of the fabric even shows through. That's some really solid stitching. It is just DMC. Um, on 25 count, it's a little, it's like seven by 10, one over one on 25. I could do it one over one on 20, but 25. I don't know, I think I might like that one as a big piece. All right, enough of my rambling. This last one, we were all eyeing this one up and then Carolyn and I, Carolyn was like, oh yeah, you should get that. I thought she was getting it too, but then there was only one left. Um, and this is a Jeanette Douglas Design APC sampler, and I've been wanting to do one of hers with the specialty stitches, and this whole bottom part is specialty stitches. So, this one, I didn't even realize until Candy or Carolyn said it, but this is one that EJ on Sunshine Stitchers has been doing, and for her alphabet, she has her flosses all pulled, and then she's just using like on her phone a spinner to tell her what color to make each letter and it's coming out gorgeous it's been totally random it hasn't called the same color two in a row and she's getting a really nice random look with it but it's really pretty i will not do these colors um these are a little too warm toned for me um a little too much brown tan happening but so I may do some more to EJ and just pull some floss and randomly grab things to do this. But I like, I love that alphabet at the top. Hmm. It could even be pretty in red and white for my red and white wall. 127 by 212. So on 32 count, no. They stitched it on 35 count R&R French Vanilla and it's 8 by 13. So 32 count would be a little bigger than 8 by 13. That's not very big. All right. I got two left. These came out of the sidewalk sale bin. So this was Shannon Christine Designs 2021 Christmas Club 3. I couldn't reduce resist this in the half off bin. I like that little snowman. I've looked at this pattern before. I think I have a 2021 Christmas Club, just not three. I think I have a different um, 
pattern from the same collection. But that one was cute. And then this other one I got in the half off bin is a Madame La Fay, Santa's Village. And this one's gonna be harder to see, I think, but oh, there. I love the little um, European looking elf uh, kids in the upper corners. If I stitch nothing else, I will stitch those two little elves or, or kids. That their hats make me think of elves. They're not elves. They're just little kids, I think. Well, I guess they could be elves. But the whole thing is just really cute. And it was in, it was in the half-off bin. And the whole pattern's in French, but I can muddle through with my high school and college French. They use the MC, so don't really need to read anything. So I think that's everything I have for this week. I'm actually surprised I got it all done in an hour. I thought I had a ton um, and I feel like I rambled a lot. So next time I talk to you, I will be back from Stitching in the Wild in Montgomery, Alabama. Um, yeah, and then I will be, I've got one week, I come back really late Sunday night. I think I'll get home at like two in the morning. And then the following Monday, so one week later, I leave for Phoenix for my two weeks out in Arizona. So I will get an episode filmed in between. And then um, my episode when I come back from Arizona may be a day late. I fly back Thursday and I've been filming Wednesday night, although this is Saturday night. I'm late this week, too. Uh, but I've been filming Wednesday night, so it gives me a couple nights to get the editing and everything done and get it published on Friday night. Uh, so hopefully I'll, I'll stick with that. I need to stick with the schedule because I'm going almost every other week. So I don't want to get out of whack here. So everybody, I hope you are having a wonderful time stitching. I'd love to know what you all are stitching on. And um, I look forward to having lots to share with you next time. So happy stitching. Bye.